What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make all three classes in Destiny invincible. Each class can do this, and all it takes is a Solar subclass. In my opinion, Solar is the strongest subclass in the game, and I may make a video in the future going over why that is. But for now, let's just show you how you can make each class invincible, all with the use of a grenade and a fragment. So let's start with the Titan, as this class is the easiest way to stay invincible with. You'll be on Sunbreaker Titan and run a healing grenade with the fragment Ember of Empyrean. Ember of Empyrean states solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you. So anytime you get a solar kill, it will extend the duration. You can also run Ember of Solace, which increases the duration of radiant and restoration effects. This will just make it more forgiving for you to maintain uptime on radiant and restoration. Without Ember of Solace, you get 5 seconds of restoration, where with Ember of Solace, you get 7 seconds. However, both of the restoration timers will max out at 13 seconds from chaining solar kills with Ember of Empyrean. So really, you don't need to run Ember of Solace. And lastly, for greater invincibility, you want to run 100 resilience and damage resistance mods on your chest piece. 100 resilience will be getting nerfed from 40% damage reduction to 30% DR come lightfall, but it will still be crucial to run for allowing you to tank damage. Restoration is truly one of the strongest effects in the entire game. It allows you to constantly heal over time, so it basically means you don't have to spec into recovery at all on a solar subclass, which is why I like to run max resilience and max discipline instead. This way, I always have a grenade ready to throw down to trigger restoration, and I have max damage resistance. Again, this is most easily done on a Titan because you want to build into resilience anyways for your barricade cooldown, and you can chain solar kills super easily with Roaring Flames x3 and the Mini Hammer. I've been soloing high-end content for months now on Titan thanks to this insane solar build with Syntheseps. Titan also offers the aspect Sol Invictus which gives you a sunspot when you get a solar ability kill. So if you get a Bonk Hammer kill, you'll proc a sunspot which also triggers restoration. So on Titan especially, you don't even need to run a healing grenade, you can just rely on the sunspot to give you restoration. However, in higher end content, the healing grenade is nice to give you restoration before getting a kill. That is because if enemies are kind of tanky and they hit you hard, you may not be able to get your hammer to max damage to chain your solar ability kills before the enemy kills you. So you can throw down a healing grenade before engaging to get that restoration going and get a couple hammer kills. And then from there, you can beat everything down and be refreshing restoration constantly with every kill thanks to Ember of Empyrean. So again, this is the easiest to do on a Titan because you don't technically even need a healing grenade, and it is the easiest to chain solar kills because your mini hammer with Syntheseps and Roaring Flames times 3 hit extremely hard, even in high tier content like Master Nightfalls and Legend Heist Battlegrounds. This was my go to for Legend Heist Battlegrounds, and I would routinely clear them in around 10 minutes. And if it is a solar burn Grandmaster like Warden of Nothing this week, it will even shred in there. So, next, let's look at the next easiest build to do this with, which is the Hunter. I like to run with the Phidias Spathe because you get two knife charges, and you can dodge with Gambler's Dodge to get both knife charges back. This is a criminally underrated build in my opinion, and I will go more in depth on it in the future after the Lightfall mod changes are live. But for now, it is the same setup as the Titan. You want high resilience, a healing grenade, and Ember of Empyrean to extend radiant and restoration effects. Another good thing to run with these builds is Ember of Torches, which makes you and nearby allies radiant from solar melee attacks. Radiant is also an extremely strong buff, and both the Titan and Hunter builds focus around the melee, so you'll just constantly be doing 25% more damage because you are always proccing Radiant with your melee attacks, and always extending the duration of both Radiant and Restoration from Ember of Empyrean. So you are just a walking tank dealing extra damage and constantly healing yourself. It's absolutely crazy. Like, look at the background footage. Just look at this Lost Sector boss and how it can barely take my health down. And lastly, that brings us to the Warlock. Warlock is tricky because you do not run healing grenades, so how can you get the restoration loop going? Well I have some extremely good news for you. This build in particular will be a lot easier to use come Lightfall, and that is because it will be more forgiving after the update. So first I will go over the current play loop for how to make Warlock invincible, and then I will detail the changes coming in Lightfall to make this way way easier. So with Warlock, you want the Sunbracer's Exotic, and you will be running the very slept on class ability Phoenix Dive. I also like to run the Incinerator Snap melee ability, but Celestial Fire works fine here too. So let's take a look at the Sunbracer's Exotic first. It states, increases the duration of solar grenades. Solar melee kills grant unlimited solar grenade energy for a brief time. 
My Sun Bracers are Arc, which allows me to run Momentum Transfer, which grants me melee energy on dealing damage with grenades. But in Lightfall, Armor Affinity is going away. So now, how this loop works is quite interesting. You consume your grenade to proc Heat Rises. When Heat Rises is active, Airborne Final Blows will grant you melee energy. So you do an Incinerator Snap melee to kill an enemy, and while it is dying to the burn from the snap, you want a Phoenix Dive. This will proc Restoration from the Dive. But because the enemy is just dying to the incinerator snap at the same time, it will count as a solar kill, proccing Ember of Empyrean, which extends the restoration timer. From there, you just start killing things with a solar weapon or your solar grenades. You obviously want Touch of Flame, the other aspect on Warlock for the enhanced grenades, and then you will just be flying around, lobbing grenades, Heat Rises is getting you your melee back from airborne kills, along with Momentum Transfer on the gloves. But again, Momentum Transfer isn't totally needed, as heat rises will do the bulk of the work. So you may actually want bolstering detonation on your gloves, as these will get you class ability energy from doing grenade damage. These are on void gloves currently, but again, this won't matter come lightfall. As you fly around getting your solar grenade kills, this is extending the duration of your heat rises, as well as the duration of restoration from Ember of Empyrean. So the hardest part about this build is actually getting the timing right between melee kills and your phoenix dive to proc restoration in the first place. It will take a little practice and finesse. But the good news is this part will become much easier in Lightfall and here's why. Bungie stated in their abilities update that Phoenix Dive is getting a buff. The base cooldown is being reduced by 27 seconds which is substantial and the restoration while heat rises is active is getting buffed from 1 second to 3 seconds. I'm not sure if Ember of Solace will buff this even further but I assume it will. Regardless, that means your timing can be way more lenient now. You'll be able to consume your grenade to activate Heat Rises and then do a Phoenix Dive and you'll have a 3 second window to get a solar kill of any kind. You could probably get a solar weapon kill in that time now to proc Ember of Empyrean instead of just having to dive and get the kill like we do now. So this gameplay loop will be much easier to get going after the update. And now I have even more good news for all of these builds. Elemental Wells are essentially going away in Lightfall and on solar subclasses they will be replaced with Fire Sprites. One of the new fragments will allow you to proc restoration from picking up a fire sprite, and another new fragment allows solar grenade final blows to cure you. So if you are whipping solar grenades everywhere, you will constantly be getting cured every time you get a kill with that grenade. And you will also be receiving restoration from the current loop that we are doing now. So anyways, that is the gameplay loop for all three classes. I didn't go in depth on the builds on each class because the mods will be changing in Lightfall, but I do plan to make an in-depth video of each one of these builds sometime after launch. I'm hoping to get the new and improved Titan build up day one, as that is the build I will be using to solo the Lightfall campaign. Anyways, I hope this general build overview for each class was helpful for you and that you learned something. And if you did, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. I plan on making a bunch of broken builds with the new mod system in the coming months, so if you are interested in that type of content, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and take care.